Good morning, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is our time and place of prayer for the 1st of April. Hard to believe we're already now into the month of April, and this is our evangelism time, but you got to make sure that you pray. Also as well, tomorrow is going to be Palm Sunday, which is, of course, the beginning of the uh, uh, Passion Week. So, Father, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity to pray, to pray into evangelism and to pray into the Passion Week. And so, Lord, now we ask your blessing upon this time and this prayer time. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, as we talked about the fact that it is Palm Sunday, or uh, coming up to Palm Sunday. And so, Father, today we thank you for the opportunity to be able to pray for tomorrow, which is, of course, the beginning of the Passion Week. Lord, we know that all around the world, there are going to be believers, Lord, that are going to be celebrating, Lord, of course, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the broken body, and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so today, Lord, what we are doing is we are preparing for today and tomorrow. Lord, I have people that I know who celebrate, of course, uh, the Sabbath and also are Messianic believers, people who love you but have chosen to uh, follow their Jewish roots. So, Lord, today we're going to pray for them, and we're also going to pray for our services tomorrow. So, Father, we thank you today. There was a wonderful scripture that simply says, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, in my previous prayer times, I've talked about the importance of both uh, having a daily devotional time and also as well a time where we come to the house of the Lord. Both of these times, Lord, are designed to allow us, Lord, to closet ourselves in, to set time aside for you. And these are things that we need to do every single day. In our devotional time, for example, we open our time, we say, okay, Lord, help us today to receive something very special from your word. And then, Lord, as we read your word things begin to become illuminated. All of a sudden, we see things that we have never seen before. And what is happening in that moment is the Holy Spirit is illuminating and revealing to us that which he has received that is special for our lives. Every single one of us are at a different place in our relationship with you. And each one are growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. When it comes to our daily devotional time and our daily prayer time, Lord, what we want to do is we want to learn what we need to learn that day. We need to receive that which we need that day because every single day is new. Every single day is different. In fact, it was Jeremiah who said this in Jeremiah Lamentations 3.23. The mercies of God are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So the thing that we have to remember is that every single day is different than the, the other day. Yesterday had its uh, uniqueness. Today will have its uniqueness. And if the Lord should so will then we will have tomorrow, and tomorrow will have, of course, its uniqueness. So what we need to be aware of is that every day is a day that we can serve the Lord. And it's a day, like the psalmist says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That means that that there's a certain attitudes that we carry throughout the day. The first attitude is, of course, that we recognize that God's mercy has been given to us for another day. And because it's his day, we're going to spend our time in, a, in an attitude of gratitude and also an attitude of thanksgiving and joy. I love that song. Therefore with joy shall they draw waters from the wells of salvation, and in that day shall they say, praise the Lord. Each one of the scriptures that I have used today is talking about the beauty 
the ebb and flow, the, you know, uh, fluidity of the day that we find ourselves. Today, I plan to go visit my family down in Killam, Alberta. And uh, I also have the privilege of being there when my daughter, Rachel, and her husband, Lawrence, are there, and my four grandchildren, Gideon, Jeremiah, Gabriella, and Judah. So we're going to be spending uh, basically uh, the day with six of our grandchildren and two of our children. Now, the interesting thing about that is it's going to be a beautiful day because we get to hang out with wonderful kids and wonderful grandkids. So it's going to be a great day. But we also have to recognize that this is also the day that the Lord could come back. And we need to live in that reality. You know, Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he says, in the twinkling of an eye, the trump shall sound. And in that moment, we shall be changed. Now, that's an incredible thought when you think about it, that at any time, at any day, Jesus Christ could come back. Now, that's the blessed hope. You say, well, he hasn't come back in 2,000 years. Doesn't matter. What does matter is the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back. And that's the blessed hope. And the other thing that we need to remember is that every day that we live, we are one day closer to the Lord's coming. So this is that day. Now today, of course, is April the 1st. And uh, that simply means that it's a brand new month. And also as well, a brand new opportunity to uh, make sure that we don't <laughs> continue or repeat the mistakes of yesterday. That's where maturity comes. Um, this week, we were talking about an individual whose name was Epiphras. Now, Epiphras, of course, in our time when we were talking about him, he prayed three things. Number one, that we would stand firm in the will of God. Number two, that we would become mature. And number three, that we would be fully assured in our salvation. And that's what we're praying today for every single one, that no matter what we face today, we're going to be standing firm in the will of God. Many people ask me over there, what is the will of God? Well, the will of God is contained in the pages of the Bible. We need to remember that the most and highest thing that we can do is the two things which I'm going to talk about now. It is the Great Commission which is Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19. We are to go into the world and bring the gospel. We're to preach the gospel, making disciples of all people. And when the opportunity comes, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then we're called to the great commandment. We're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. If we do those two things well, we are going to be so busy doing the master's business. We won't have time to uh, worry about this or that because the simple fact is God is going to supply every need according to his riches and glory. Now, tomorrow in my service, one of my guys is going to be sharing a wonderful testimony of God's healing and God's provision. And I'm really, really looking forward to when he shares how that on Sunday we got together and uh, we were praying about specific things. And God in his wonderful mercy, uh, not only took care of those needs, but did it so quickly that we were both absolutely shocked and surprised when he contacted me on Monday morning and says, Pastor, this is what happened. I just went, well, isn't that amazing? Especially when all the doors had seemed to be closed. And then last night when he texted me, he says, Pastor, that other need that I have, well, God is well on the way of taking care of that as well. Isn't that the goodness of God? Now, I just want to remind you and reiterate something. We had a healing Sunday, okay? And we prayed for people for their particular needs. And it was very interesting that this week I have been getting, you know, back from people the fact that God is healing and God is answering prayer. Now, 
in that uh, Sunday morning service, I simply reminded the people that it says where two or three is agree as touching anything, it shall be done. That's all I was doing. I was reminding them. I said, listen, you are you need to be very specific about what it is that you want from God. I said, you need to think about what it is that you want God to do. And then my responsibility as a fellow believer is to pray that that thing will happen. Because the Bible says where two or three is agree as touching anything, it shall be done. It is through the two or three witnesses that our things are confirmed. God is looking for us to be very specific about what it is that we want from him. Now, that means that we need to think about what it is that we want to see God do. Some things are easy and obvious. Other things are not easy or obvious. Some things require us to consider the pros and cons. We have to, you know, talk about it with maybe for our spouses or, you know, whatever it is that you want God to do. And then you and your spouse, if you, and especially if you have a spouse, it is important to pray together and say, okay, we're facing this situation. We're planning to do this thing. What do you think? And there's this communication that's going on. You see, prayer in its deepest and most simplest form, too, is communication. You are talking to God, and God is talking to you. It's a dialogue. It's not a monologue. Many times we turn prayer into a monologue. And we come to God and say, oh, God, this is my shopping list, God, and I'm going to talk to you about it. And then we, you know, lay it on them and then kind of just leave, not realizing that God wants to talk to us. You say, OK, how does God talk to us? Well, he does it a couple of ways. The first way, of course, very often, 90 percent of the time, he does it through the word of God. But then there's another thing called direct impression. You just know that you need to do something. And then there's that, of course, that uh, aspect of when you hear the preaching of God's Word. Tomorrow, I'm going to have the privilege of preaching God's Word. Now, I'm going to be sharing about Palm Sunday. I'm going to be sharing about how that Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, how the fact that he was uh, put on a colt how that he told his disciples exactly what was going to happen. That was the, uh, that was the uh, om omniscience of Jesus Christ. He also knew that uh, the heart of the people, he knew that that same crowd that was going to be hailing him as the king just a few days later would be saying, crucify him, crucify him, and also saying, let his blood be on our uh, you know, on us and our children. So basically, Jesus knew the heart of all men. Now, the interesting thing is when you hear the word of God, it can penetrate your heart. In fact, the writer of Hebrews says, the word of God is living and active, able to know and reveal the thoughts and intents of the heart, being able to penetrate even to the deepest part of our lives. That's what the Word of God can do. And what we need to be is open to the Word of God and allow the Word of God to speak deeply into our hearts. And, and getting back to one of my original thoughts, and that is when we go into our time and place of prayer, that's part of that. Also as well, when we come to the house of the Lord, and that's where we're going to go right now. So Father, today we have pastors and we have believers who are either going to meet today or prepare for today. So, Lord, what I want to do right now is I want to pray for my fellow pastors. Lord, I ask today that your power, your authority, your anointing, your enablement, your wisdom, your clarity and boldness would fall upon them right now in Jesus' name. I'm so grateful for every proclaimer of the word. Father, it is an absolute privilege to be able to stand behind a sacred desk and to proclaim, thus saith the word of the Lord. Now, what I'm praying for each one of them today is that they will not be preaching vain philosophy. I pray today that they will not be praying or they will not be preaching, Lord, 
from their own understanding. What I pray today, Lord, is that they would pray, preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. And, and Father, I know that, Lord, each and every single one has a message from you and or can have a message from you. Lord, the one thing that I don't want to see happen is I don't want to have dead preachers bringing dead messages to dead services. Father, I'm asking today that when they have their preparation time, when they're writing out their sermons, when they are presenting their messages, that, Father, you are going to get a hold of them. One of the most interesting stories in the Bible is the story of Caiaphas. Caiaphas, who was the high priest at the time, was not in any way, Lord, a, 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 um, what we would call a righteous or godly man. He was more political. But it was interesting that you used him to bring a prophecy about Jesus Christ. And isn't that interesting that you can get a hold of anyone and you can use them, Lord, to bring forth your message? Because, Lord, you honor not only the message, but, Lord, you honor the office. And so, Father, today, whether they are apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, whether they are elders or deacons, they may be priests, they may be, uh, go by the name Father. They may even go by the name of uh, Bishop. Whatever that name is, when they stand behind that sacred desk, I pray today that, Lord, you would get a hold of them. And that, Father, that they would be preaching the Word of God. And we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, Father, also as well, I pray that, Lord, for example, what I'm, I'm going to be talking about from the invocation to the benediction. The invocation, Lord, is the opening prayer. I pray that from the opening prayer right to the benediction, which is the closing prayer, that every component of the service, Lord, is going to have a divine impact. Lord, you have this, you, you want to touch the people. In fact, you said where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst. So, Father, we know that no matter where we are, whatever we and whatever denomination we are, Lord, when we meet, Lord, there's going to be a divine component involved in that. And that's what we want to see happen, Lord. We want to see, Lord, you being glorified, you being exalted, you being lifted up. That's what we're praying for today. So, Lord, I pray for that. Also as well, Lord, I pray today that, Father, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, those that belong to Cornerstone, which is my church, and all the churches, Lord, would be drawn right now. Lord, as far north as Gishord, as far south as Antarctica, as far east as Jerusalem, and as to the West as well. Lord, we're calling children, young people, young adults, young families, families with teenagers, empty nesters, and seniors. We're calling right now our unsaved loved ones. We're calling our Christian brothers and sisters. We're calling, Lord, the disenfranchised, those that, Lord, say they love you, but haven't darkened the door of a church for a while. We're calling the prodigals and the backsliders, and we're calling the unsaved. Lord, we're calling them right now from every city and town, village, hamlet, and settlement, state, territory, province, canon, and county. And Father, we're declaring today, whether they live in North America, South America, uh, Africa, or Europe, Asia, or the great uh, the islands of the ocean, Father, we are calling them right now. So we're going to use the geographical location where I am, and we're going to use that as our our reference point. So, Father, today in the name of Jesus from northern Edmonton, northern St. Albert, northern Alberta, Nunavut, Northwest Territories, the Yukon, Alaska, Russia, Scandinavia, the Baltic countries, northern Europe, Great Britain, Ireland, Greenland, and Iceland, we're going to call them to the south, southern St. Albert, through Edmonton, central and south Alberta, United States and Mexico, the Caribbean islands, central and south America, to the east, eastern St. Albert, eastern Alberta, 
Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Islands of the Ocean, Africa and Europe, to the west, western St. Albert, western Alberta, United States and Mexico, British Columbia, Yukon, Alaska, the 23,000 islands of the Pacific, northern, southern New Zealand, Tasmania, Australia, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, China, Indochina, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and the great continent of Asia. Father, we are asking for angelic protection over every person that has been called to our churches today. We are releasing them right now in the name of Jesus. One of the things that we are praying for today is this, that every single one would have a hunger, a thirst, and a desperation for God's word. Also as well, Lord, we pray today that you would compel them and drive them and bring them, Lord, to the house of the Lord. Let the angels right now be camping around them. Now, Lord, there are some things that we want to see happen. First of all, we want to turn every one of our assemblies into a house of prayer. It is so important. And so, Father, today, especially on this day, as we prepare, Lord, for our summer evangelism outreaches. Lord, we've been praying for the last little while that we would be ready to go out into our world and bring the gospel. But how does that happen? It happens through the power of prayer. And so, Father, we are releasing into our churches intercessors, people who can and people who will pray with every fiber of their being. Lord, that's what we're praying for. Secondly, Lord, in this time and place of prayer, we are asking that, Lord, you would bring people who love the Word of God. Now, we've talked about the importance of the Word of God, both privately and publicly and in a corporate place. Father, we want to make sure that every church that we pray for today is going to be a place where the Word of God is prayed, preached, and also, Lord, prayed. Because, Lord, we need to pray the Word of God as well. So we're praying that, Lord, you'll release people who love the Word. That you'd leave peop release people, Lord, who love to give. Every church, Lord, basically needs to have their basic needs met. And so, Lord, we're praying today that you'll release people who love to give. Also, as well, Lord, we're praying today that you'll release people who love to serve. One thing that is happening over and over, Lord, is this, that, Lord, we need people to come alongside, and we need people, Lord, to be able to uh, be able to serve wherever that capacity would be. Also, as well, Lord, we're praying today that you'll release people who love to worship God, and also, Lord, love the moving of the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, one thing that we do pray is that you will have complete and total authority and influence and also as well, complete and total, I'm not going to use the word domination, but I will say this, that you would have your way in our services today or tomorrow. Father, whether we are praying for today and the meetings that are going to happen today or the meetings that are going to happen tomorrow, we are saturating these areas with prayer. Because, Lord, we know, James 4, 2 says this, you have not because you ask not. In fact, it was Paul said, in, he says, be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, let your requests be known to God. So every prayer time has to have a purpose. It has to have a design. It has to have an aim or an objective. Lord, we don't want to just be, you know, talking about things. We don't want to be just shooting the breeze. Father, we want to make sure that every prayer time that we have is well thought out. That, Lord, we have, you know, an ebb and flow. I know that, Lord, every time I come to prayer, I'm not exactly sure what it is that uh, you want to do. Now, Lord, there are times when I come to prayer where I have an objective and I have an aim. And I say, for example, that I'm going to follow a particular uh, biblical model, etc. But Lord, there are a lot of times where I just come into prayer and say, okay, God, I want to pray what it is 
that's on the heart of you today. Lord, I want to bring what you want into my world today. Because I recognize, as we started off our prayer time, this is the only day that I have. <laughs> Yesterday, I had the uh, privilege and also the fun of starting my motorcycle up. I went and bought a brand new battery, and uh, it was a high-performance, you know, big battery that would be more than capable of, you know, making sure that my motorcycle would run properly. And uh, I started it up, and I took some pictures of it, and I, you know, took a little video, posted it online, you know, all of that. I, I drive a motorcycle, and because I drive a motorcycle, I know that every time I get on that motorcycle, if I return home, that is a wonderful benefit. And when you live your life that way, when you know that every trip is, you know, an opportunity to, to enjoy the ride, but you also know that there are out, out there are outside factors and unknown things that may or may not stop you from coming home. Lord, that's a reality with life in general. I was thinking, you know, this week we had the regimental funeral of two police officers, um, Travis Ryan and um, Travis Jordan and Brett Ryan. And uh, these were two police officers who a couple of weeks ago went to a domestic dispute, not knowing that there was a 16-year-old boy who had a long rifle and he was going to end their lives and hit, end his own life. And they never knew that at 1247 that morning that that would be the last time that they would actually be alive. We never know. And I'm not trying to be morbid in any way. I'm just reminding myself and reminding you today of the ebb and flow of life and that every moment that we have with you and every moment that we have with the people that we love is a precious moment. That's why it is so important to take advantage of every opportunity when they come, whether it is visiting with your spouse, visiting with friends, visiting with family, going to the house of the Lord, having a prayer time. These are precious times. And these precious times are times that we can strengthen our relationship with God. We can strengthen our relationship with our, with our partner. We can, we can strengthen our relationship with our families. And one of the things that I want to really pray today is that, Lord, we would let go of those weights and sins that so easily beset us. It is so easy to major on the minors and minor on the majors. We need to recognize that there are some intangibles that we need in our lives. Things such as peace and love and joy. Things such as mercy and grace. Things such as kindness and friendship. Things such as, you know, patience things such as forgiveness. Lord, I pray today that we in this prayer time and also, Lord, throughout this day would prioritize our lives. And we would say, Lord, whatever it is that you want me to do, I want to do. Whatever you want me to be, I want to be. Whatever you want me to say, I want to say. Whatever attitudes and motives that you want me to display and also to have as part of my life, that's what I am praying for today. Lord, that's what we want to do today. And I thank you, Lord, today for this day. And I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to pray together, to stand in the gap. And thank you, Lord, for your wonderful kindness. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I see by the clock on the wall that our time has gone. I always usually like to spend about a half an hour with you every day. Not so long that you get bored, but long enough to get a, my point across. My name is Robert Dean Steele. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And as I always say, if you like what you've been hearing, please press the like button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Father, 
thank you today for this time and place of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the teachings that we have attempted to bring across, and also as well, Lord, to teach people how to pray. It is so important to know how to pray and to meet with one another. We ask this now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.